Hey guys, be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Instagram for extra content you won't see here. Click the links in the description below. Hey, what's up guys? Eva Red 94 back again with another action figure review. This time we're going to take a look at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Figure Arts Kame Senen, or also known as Master Roshi. So we have a green and white packaging color scheme this time around for Roshi. There you can see the figure displayed. On the other side we get some pictures of the figure with various different accessories. On the other side is just his name. And on the back side we get more poses of the figure and a lot of Japanese wording along with English as well. Alright guys, let's get him out of the box. So this is our second installment in the Dragon Ball line of SH Figuarts. I was very surprised and happy to see this actually get a release. There's been a lot of times where Bandai Tamashi has announced a lot of figures and they never release them or they don't see the light of day until five years or whatever. So happy that Roshi got a quick release. So it looks like they are going to go ahead and continue on with the Dragon Ball line. So that is great. We started it off with Kid Goku and now we're continuing it on with Master Roshi. We have Boma on the way and Kid Krillin just got announced. So that is four figures so far. It seems like each one comes with a Dragon Ball. So I believe there is still three more remaining that have not been announced. If you count the four that we have now, we already have four Dragon Balls. So it only leaves three more. So I'm hoping we at least get a King Piccolo out of one of those. So here is our Master Roshi, how he comes packaged in. We have no glasses. We have really no accessories on. His little turtle back isn't on either the shell. Uh, there is the big peg hole there to attach the shell. So it does come separately. And he does come packed in with a lot of accessories. And that is... So refreshing to see, you know, to see so many accessories reminds me of the old, you know, when the old trunks got released and it came with so many accessories. So let's take a look at the accessories right now. So firstly, we do have his iconic sunglasses, who is Roshi without those legendary glasses. So that's nice that it is removable. It's not attached to a face scope where you have to have two separate heads to have one with and without the glasses. So they both fit on both heads that he comes with. And speaking of the heads, uh, he does come with two heads, including the one that comes on the figure. So we get the one on the figure, which is this one right here. You can see his eyes are kind of drooping down and his eyebrows are the main difference here. You can see his eyebrows are raised up like that. Uh, this is the unique thing about this face sculpt is, I mean, you really can't see much because half his face is covered by his beard. So his second head is going to be this one right here. So we have the mouth open, which is really nice. And then we have the eyebrows more seriously posed right there. You can see the difference in the eyebrows and the eyes are straight uh, straight out now. So that's interesting. That makes for a huge difference when you're going to attach the glasses. To so the glasses just slide on easily. Fits like a glove like it's supposed to. So that is nice uh, to see that there's no struggle there. And you can see here how that looks with the mouth open and the eyebrows more seriously. And then you are able to swap out the mouth pieces or the beard. So the open mouth can go onto the other face that looks weird right there. Uh, but you go ahead and put the open mouth on this face with the eyebrows raised. And it makes for a totally different expression just by that. So you can see right there he looks like he's much more happier now. And put on the glasses. And now we get really, really happy Master Roshi there. Looks like he's looking at some, some girls in some bikinis right now. Put the closed mouth on the serious face and you get this expression right here. And you can see in the glasses there, it's uh, like a nice glittery green paint inside. Um, it goes on both sides right there. The, the red is just the plastic, but they painted the, the lens this very uh, glittery looking green color. Moving on with the accessories here, we have his shell that would go on his back and check out the, the paint and texture and overall sculpt of this thing. It looks very nice. I think they did a good job here. And they did go ahead and shade it with that blue color. So it looks very nice. On the inside, we get the peg that would go onto the peg hole on the back of Roshi right there. And we do get a number of four peg holes on the sides and that is for the straps. The straps do come separately right here. So two straps would go in those holes and you can put it over his shoulders. We also do get a separate little peg to put on his back. If you don't want the shell attached to him, you can just go ahead and uh, put the, the normal peg on the back. Now it is a tad bit difficult to get these straps on while the shell is on because you got to kind of do it while the shell is on. But it is possible, you just got to keep messing with it. So there's the straps. And I'm not sure if I have it all the way in because we get a little gap right there between the shoulder and the strap. 
uh, like I said, you have to kind of do it while it's on, and then you got to push from here, and it kind of gets scary because you don't want to snap that piece. But for the most part, look, this is how it looks with the strap and the shell on, and it looks great. I think that looks fantastic. Got the glasses on, and everything looks great. Now, the back piece right here, this is a removable piece, so I kind of don't like it because you see the line around it. You see the gap, a little bit of a, a, you know, a very tiny gap there, but you can see it compared to the rest of the shell. And uh, that's, you can remove it and put the flight stand. He does come with a flight stand and it pegs on his back if you want to hold them uh, still. But I don't know why they did that because he can stand perfectly on his own. Even with the shell, he can stand. So that's, uh, that's quite interesting that they chose to do that. All right, so as for the hands, we do get the two fists that are on the figure right now already packaged in. And then as for pairs, we only get two other pairs that are matching. So we get these two grabbing hands right here. So they are matching left and right. And then we do get uh, these kind of imposing hands when he's ready to fight on the left and right. Now I say that because now we get uh, a lot of more hands, but only one side has it. So this is... For the left hand only, we get a peace sign for the left hand only. And we do get a waving, like, hello hand on the left hand. Continuing on with the left hand, we get a pointing finger. And then last but not least, we get a grabbing right there. Now going on to the right hand, we get two additional hands. We get a straight posed hand right here. And then we do get a pointing finger, but it's slightly bent on the index finger right there. Of course, he does come with a Dragon Ball, and we get the three-star Dragon Ball this time around with Master Roshi. And his final accessory is going to be his cane, of course. Who is Master Roshi without his cane? And there it is. Just a uh, brown plastic. Nice sculpt, but there's no paint applied to it at all. A little bit of shading would have made it look a little better. I wish they would have made it look more realistic, more of a wooden uh, color but uh, it is an anime right so can't really say you want to make it look realistic so that's fine by me it looks great at least it's sculpted very nicely all right so we're going to take a look at some of the articulation that this guy comes with so i'm quite interested in what you're going to do here so let's start it off here we're going to start with the head the head's going to turn left and right now the beard is going to hinder it slightly uh, but he still turns nonetheless. That looks great. I think it's enough for me, so I'm happy with that. Now, when he has the shell applied, the head is not going to move up that much. It's going to get hindered. Now, the shell kind of moves back, but if you move it too far back, it's going to pop off the peg. So you can still get him to look up. You can still play with it and get him to look up. Of course, when the shelf is gone, he's going to look up all the way. The straps are kind of holding it in, but let's say, the, you know, you, got, you get the idea uh, where you, you can move it, of course, further Looking down is going to happen a little bit because of beard is going to hinder it, of course. So you can look down a little bit. You can get the ab crunch to uh, make him look down a little bit better if you so wish. The arms are going to go forward and back. They're going to go in and out. We do get a bicep swivel in there. It's very hard to see, uh, but it is there. There's a cut and it does swivel. We get a good uh, socket for the shoulder. We do get a double jointed elbow, although it only bends 90 degrees. It's very thick uh, piece there. So we get the rest on our traditional ball jointed hinge. So it's going to swivel. It's going to hinge in there. We got enough space in there to move that hand around. So that's nice. Uh, as you see, we get kind of three pieces on the torso. He is going to slightly uh, swivel his torso left and right. It's not too dynamically, but you don't really need that anyways. He's going to crunch forward a lot and he's going to crunch back. Actually, I'm going to take off the shelf for a second. All right, so it kind of pops up right here and you can kind of see inside. It's a little bit of a gap once you pop it up. It's on a it's on a peg in there, so he does turn left and right all the way like that, but it gets a little ugly if you go too much, of course. He does go forward, he does go back, so good range there. As for this piece right here, it doesn't really move around that piece. And all this is hard plastic all up until you get to the bottom piece. It's very, very soft. Uh, not even plastic. I don't even know what it is. It's rubber plastic, probably a mixture of both. Uh... So that's good, so it doesn't hinder any of the leg movement. You can see we got the new 2.0 articulation down there. So we got the legs going forward. They're going to go back, good range, in and out. And thanks to the very soft uh, piece down below, we can move it in and out, no problem. We do get a thigh swivel. We have a double jointed knee, bends about this much here. The ankles are going to hinge forward and back. They're going to pivot just fine. They will swivel right there and then we do get a toe hinge on the toe. Alright so I'm pretty sure this was confirmed somewhere. I don't know where I heard it or read it from but I think it's confirmed that uh, Bandai Tamashi said that 
the Dragon Ball series of SH figures are not to be in scale with the regular Dragon Ball Z or Super series of figures. That kind of answered the question on why he was a little bit big. People were complaining why Roshi was so big compared to, you know, Goku or whatever. So I think they answered that by saying that it just is their own kind of series, their own kind of scale for, for those figures only. Uh, Kid Goku was also a little bit big for Kid Goku too. So that kind of kind of makes sense, right? In the end of the day, these are the Dragon Ball versions of these characters, so you're not really going to display Kid Goku with, let's say, Goku Black or something like that, so it really isn't a big deal for me. Now, that being said, let's get some sex comparisons anyways with some of the Dragon Ball Z series figures. So we have the regular adult Goku. This is the most recently released, a San Raised on Earth right here, and then we'll go ahead and throw in the Super Saiyan god super saiyan vegeta i just reviewed this head sculpt in case you guys missed out on that review check it out this is the demonical fit head sculpt uh, for this 2.0 vegeta body so you can see how they kind of stand next to roshi roshi does seem a little big for you know for what it is next to goku and vegeta and then we'll throw in the new Super Saiyan Blue Vegito. So definitely, yes, look at the head on Roshi. So huge compared to the head on Vegito. And I don't think it's that big in the show. So yeah, I think I think we kind of get the idea that it's its own scaling. Now you guys are going to hate me for this, but I'm actually in a position right now where I can't get to my kid Goku figure to, uh, to do a comparison. I know, horrible, right? But forgive me. I'm going to go ahead and compare him next to a Jack Pacific figure. Actually, this is the pumped up super bulky uh master roshi figure actually the only one i think we have right now until <clears throat> figure arts makes one hopefully they uh they make one of these this is uh, on my wish list too a you know a transformed master roshi like this would be amazing for figure arts i mean this looks great for Jax, and Jax made some pretty ugly figures so if it looks great for Jax, i think uh, i think bandai could do some wonders with uh with the sh figure arts line and there's a little Cyberman. Just get a little small little guy in there just to compare him next to. And then last but not least, we'll get him next to his best friend, the Turtle. This is actually the Irwin Turtle figure. And how nice would it have been if Roshi over here came with Turtle? That'd be a pretty cool accessory, like the way that Tien came with Chatsu and Yamcha came with Cyberman. That'd be nice. But this guy already came with so many accessories, I don't think they could have possibly packed it in for a, for a cheap price. Alright guys, and that's going to do it for my review of the new Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Figure Dragon Ball Master Roshi figure. I definitely think this is a great addition to add to your Dragon Ball collection or your overall figure arts DBZ collection. Definitely don't pass up on Master Roshi of all characters. Master Roshi is a must have. This, I think Bandai Tamashi is just killing it. Absolutely killing it this year with the releases. This has to be by far the best year of Dragon Ball Z figures and it hasn't even finished yet we got plenty more to come before the year is over so I'm happy we got Master Roshi this is a great figure great accessories few gripes probably would have to be the fact that he doesn't come with dirty magazines or a nosebleed that'd be amazing um you know hint hint demonical fit that'd be a great idea for you guys to put out uh, a nosebleed faceplate uh and a uh, d like a 112 scale dirty magazine or something that he can uh hold that'd be amazing you know this is what he does this is his character you know? and i think that was a little bit of a missed opportunity by bandai but who knows i'm sure they aren't allowed to put stuff out like that uh, so that might be a reason i haven't seen them put any type of blood on any of their figures at all so that might be a rule they have even their battle damage figures didn't have blood on them i did have a gripe about that too so maybe they're not allowed to do anything on that part of you know of, of things i don't know i don't know how it works but nonetheless this figure came out great and i do recommend it so i hope you guys enjoyed this review leave a like if you did leave a comment subscribe if you have not done so already guys and as always i'll catch you in the next one bye